G'day One World Fly Squad, my name is Jaden, welcome back to my channel. I'm at beautiful Changi Airport Terminal 1. Today I'm going to fly Qantas operated by Finnair, QF Flight 292 from here to Sydney. So basically Qantas were at least two Finnair A330 using Finnair Singapore based cabin crew as well on this route to Sydney. So it'll be quite interesting to see what, what's on offer in flight. Now without further ado, let's head inside, check in with Qantas. We got to the airport 7 hours before our flight, super nice and early because 6 foot 4 is an airport dad. So unfortunately at this time you can't check in with Qantas at the terminal. Here are where all the Qantas check-in counters are. It's mostly self check-in and self bag drop. Thankfully there is a way to get around this. Adjacent to Terminal 1 is the Jewel Shopping Mall with the iconic waterfall which is apparently the largest indoor waterfall in the world. This shopping mall offers plenty of shopping and eating options. One of the many vital services that they offer is early airline check-in. Not all airlines are available. Most of those flights depart late in the evening. So for those who need to check out from their hotels in Singapore, you don't need to drag your suitcase around the city. All Qantas flights are eligible for early check-in at the Jewel. Bye-bye! So that was really really easy, I got my boarding pass and bag tags. We then went to the upper level to check out the waterfall and we had afternoon tea with friends. And now with about 3 hours left before our flight boards, we went back to Terminal 1 and cleared through immigration. If you're flying in Qantas economy from Singapore and you've got one World Sapphire membership, including Qantas Gold, you've got several lounge options. They are the Qantas International Business Lounge, British Airways Lounge and the Emirates Lounge. Last time when I was here, I checked out the Emirates and Qantas. Today, I'll check out the BA and Qantas. They're literally right next to each other. From Singapore Changi, BA has three daily flights. One flight to Sydney departing at 8pm, same as our flight, and two midnight departures to London Heathrow. And for Qantas, they've got flights to Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, yada yada. That's a whole lot more flights and a lot more people using the lounges. So at this time of the day, the BA lounge is usually quieter, the Qantas lounge is more crowded. In the BA lounge, you'll find a snack bar, a full buffet, a self-serve wine bar offering Prosecco and red and white. Champagne is available on request. Let me show you what food is on offer. For the cold selection, there are fruit, pastries and cheese. Then at the hot food area, it's mostly western food, mashed potatoes, beans and carrots and braised beef. For local flavours, they've got chicken satays and butter chicken. In addition to all the buffet food, you can order chicken pasta or cheese pasta via the QR code that you'll find on every table. Within that mobile phone ordering portal, you'll also find champagne and a small selection of cocktails. I really enjoy the additional offering that you'll find via the QR code. So far, my visit to the BA Lounge has been really great. It's nice and quiet, comfortable furniture, not exceptional but good food, and on top of that, we've got champagne, which you won't find in a Qantas Business Lounge. Before we take a shower and head to the Qantas Lounge, here's the cheese and mushroom pasta. Right behind the entrance of the BA Lounge, you'll find the shower rooms. There was no wait or queue to get in today. Like the BA Lounges at London Heathrow Airport, they used the brand LMS for their shower products. The shower room isn't that big, there was no storage for your hand carry luggage other than the floor space. Otherwise, it's quite functional, very clean and very bright. I really really enjoyed taking a rain shower. Next we checked out the Qantas Singapore Lounge, more specifically the business class section. It's about a 30 to 40 meter walk from the BA Lounge. Qantas club members flying on Qantas can also use this lounge. Without exaggeration, this lounge is probably 5 times bigger than the BA. We're currently at the dining area, let me show you the buffet. A lot of western options, just like the BA Lounge next door, pork stew, pasta etc. There is a bit more food here, but 644 and I both agreed that the BA food tastes better. However, the Qantas Singapore Laksa trumps the BA Satays. And also Australians love their coffee, so they've got barista made coffee. So in the future, when I've got time at this airport, I'll come here for coffee and a bowl of Laksa. But I'll head over to the BA to relax before my flight. The Qantas business is just way too big, it feels like a massive food court. There also aren't enough partitions between seats, so privacy isn't that great. Being an Australian lounge, they probably offer a better selection of wines, however there's no champagne available. That's reserved for the first class guests in the first class lounge. So after a while we walked back to the BA lounge, the staff at the door said welcome back and we didn't need to scan our boarding passes again. 
There's one more reason why I prefer this lounge over the Qantas. The Qantas lounges are more family friendly. A Qantas member flying Qantas can take three guests, including two children, into the lounge. But other One World lounges, including BA, follow the One World regulation. One member, one guest. No extra guests, even if it's an infant. So that's why the BA lounge is so quiet and peaceful. Now it's finally time to board our flight to Sydney. We're departing from the D gate today, about five minute walk from the lounges. You can hear a lot of Aussie accents around this area. All the Qantas planes are parked nearby. Here's the aircraft that'll bring us to Sydney. A Finnair operated Airbus A330-300 Oscar Hotel, Lima Tango Romeo. The aircraft is 14 years old. This Finnair plane is currently based in Sydney, Australia, flying exclusively for Qantas between Sydney and Singapore, as well as Sydney and Bangkok. Priority boarding was strictly observed. First aboard was business class, followed by platinum and gold members. Hello. Okay, so sit on board. 43. So 43 this way? Yeah, thank you. Welcome on board Finnair A330. Here's their new economy class. My seat tonight is 43A, the last row of the forward economy cabin. On every seat, you'll find headphones, water, pillow and blanket. Here's the wing view for our flight all the way to Sydney. So Finnair is operating this flight for Qantas, using Finnair Singapore-based cabin crew. There are small things that you can tell this is a Qantas flight, like the in-flight entertainment has the Qantas branding, and so does the headrest cover. I'll now quickly go through the sea features. You've got a touchscreen TV, USB ports, USB-C attached to it, a small storage compartment, right underneath the TV it fits in your phone and passport. Tray table can be folded in half and moved back and forth. Down there you'll find a seat pocket, inside is a Finnair safety card and a Qantas in-flight magazine, a separate pocket for your personal items like your boarding pass and mobile phone. Leg room is alright for me, not too good for 6 foot 4. We both feel like the Qantas A330-200 without the TV has more leg room. Clear, Headrest is comfy and so is the recline. For 6 foot 4, the biggest letdown was the leg room. For me, it's this chocolate stain. I tried to get rid of it with a wet wipe, it didn't work. He will tell you more about this in the morning, closer Sydney. At this moment, I wish you a very nice flight. Thank you. Unlike the Qantas operated A330-300, in the last row you don't have this door right next to you. On Finnair you do, so it might be bothersome. Along with seating your person in the economy cabin and the crew, we will be looking after you today. attention as we go through the safety features of this aircraft. For your own safety, please stay focused for the next few minutes even if you're already familiar with the safety instructions. Out. The moot lighting is gorgeous on Finnair A330, something you don't get on Qantas.
Shortly after takeoff, the lights were switched on, the crew distributed arrival cards for Australia. And 644 pointed out his IFE screen is not working, the crew's gonna sort it out. Roasted chicken rice, braised beef with noodles, and plant-based dining. Penny with cauliflower. As the courtesy to others around you during the service, please have your seat back in our prior position and to keep out during the mail service. Thank you. One thing I do like about Qantas is that their long haul economy amenities are still quite good. Particularly the pillow, it's really soft and quite big. Some European airlines have gotten rid of them, like Finnair and KLM. The crew have now started the meal service. They'll begin in premium economy and then come down to economy. I'll now go through the in-flight entertainment with you guys. So the in-flight map is really easy to use and overall the system is super user friendly. For the movie and TV content, they're provided by Finnair. You can also check out the menu on today's flight. So after departure, we'll get dinner, three options. And before arrival into Sydney, we'll get a light breakfast, one option. The bar selection for economy is pretty good. A good selection of spirits, beer, and non-alcoholic beverages. After a few minutes, the crew is only a few rows away from me. I found that the service by the Singaporean-based crew are so much faster than the Australian-based crew. They just work faster, I suppose. But I do also enjoy the chit chats I have with the Australian crew, each to their own, I suppose. For dinner, I went for the plant based penne pasta. I didn't need to pre order a plant based because I knew that Qantas would serve something vegan on every long haul flight. 644 went for the braised beef with noodles. Both the presentation and taste, 10 out of 10, we would be happy to get this even in business. The juicy sauce that you get from the beef goes really well with the noodles. For beverages, I went for mineral water. Six foot four went for ginger beer. Each meal also comes with a Tim Tam and a garlic bread. Qantas has my favorite bread in economy. They don't give you white bread and butter like every single other airline, but they always give you something flavored. For dessert, we had this almond cake. So dinner was lovely. It's now time to sleep. If you're new to my channel, I'm so glad you made it here. Every week I upload a new trip report on my channel so be sure to hit that subscribe and bell button so you don't miss out. Throughout the night, the weak purple mood lighting was left switched on. We're now flying over South Australia and in about 10 minutes time we'll fly over Adelaide, my former home of 9 and a half years. And now the crew have started serving us breakfast. We were given this pastry, scrambled eggs and mushroom pastry. For a pastry, it's rather big. And normally arriving into Australia, I would prefer a bigger, proper breakfast. But we are indeed arriving quite early at 7am, so I don't mind this one. For beverages, they're offering juice, coffee and tea. I went for OJ. That wasn't a bad breakfast. And between now and arrival into Sydney, we have time to use the lavatory or catch a nap. Hello there, welcome to Finnair A330 Economy Lavatory. Amenity wise, really we got nothing here, not even the Qantas brand that had soap. You'll find the soap just in this thing here. The toilet, nothing too special again, a very standard 330 lavatory with a cute little cohook. They ran out of soap here, oh dear. We've now started our descent into Sydney's Kingsford Smith Airport and I'll quickly conclude this trip port with Qantas operated by Finnair right here right now. Our journey today started at Singapore Changi. Flying with Qantas, I was able to use the early check-in facility at the Jewel shopping mall that was particularly useful because I got there quite early. 
After a while I went to the BA and Qantas lounges. Overall I preferred the vibe in the BA lounge, it was more quiet and peaceful, but the laxa and coffee were good at the Qantas business lounge. We then went to our gate to board this flight. I found it funny how they separated business class and gold platinum members in economy. It's not the usual Finnair, One World or even Qantas procedure. But at the end of the day I was still able to board before most passengers. That way I could secure a spot in the overlocker bins and start filming the seat features, so I was happy. The cabin crew today were friendly. It's a different type of friendliness compared to the Australian crew, I like it both ways. For the meal, dinner was excellent, tasty and good portion, breakfast was alright. Now for the seat, personally I don't mind the Finnair seat. The seat back is quite thick, I had a comfortable sleep, but 644 is taller than me obviously. He prefers flying on the Qantas Metal with more legroom. So overall today I enjoyed my flight very much, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment and share, and if you're new to my channel be sure to hit that subscribe and bell button next to it. I'll see you again next week when I next upload, and also later in the vlog if you're interested. See you later, bye. Welcome to London! So I was in London about two weeks before I caught the QF292 flight. I don't have a Sydney vlog for you guys so I'll show you this instead. We just had a lovely breakfast at the Hilton London Heathrow Terminal 4. Then we took a train to Windsor. We'll check out the Windsor Castle today. Last time I tried to go, unfortunately it was closed for visitors. So we'll try that again today. The train is giving Southwest Airline. Six 
We made it inside the castle area. We spent about an hour or so here. We went to Marks and Spencer to buy some tea to bring it back to Australia. So that was the whole morning spent in Windsor. We're now going to take the train to central London. We're at Liverpool Street Station. We're on the lift that goes up alongside with the escalator. We went up to Horizon 22, a free observatory here in central London. From here you see plenty of sites of London including Tower Bridge, Tower of London, Canary Wharf and City Airport. I'll be flying out from City Airport later this year. I can't wait to take that flight. The couple in front of us fit in so well with the buildings around us. Later we're going to go to Brixton for dinner with a friend. And between now and then we're going to take a walk at the famous High Park. I've always wondered why there was a Hong Kong flag on that building. Turns out that's a Mandarin Oriental Hotel, a Hong Kong hotel brand. <laughs> 